I, uh, my life, uh, our life was really good. We were planning forward uh, the last year. Uh, he died just six months after uh, signing the contract for the first three books in Sweden, so we never really had the time to make up a will or anything like that. And that's one of the reasons that, that I became disinher disinherited, because people who cohabit in Sweden, uh, we don't ever inherit and we can't by law either go to court and ask a court to decide on, on the matter if this is a reasonable outcome or not. So I had a lot to struggle with after he died. Um, but fortunately I had something that most people don't have. I had, I had words from Stig what I would do if he had died. Just by chance. Uh, he was going to Africa in 1977. I think he was carrying uh, some documents for some political documents, and he expected to um, to maybe get caught and, and be executed because there was a civil war going on. And uh, during that that trip, uh, he became very, very ill. He caught malaria, and he got some side effects of the malaria as well, so he collapsed in Addis Ababa and was uh, rushed to a hospital by people who lived at the same hotel as him. And I think he was unconscious for 24 hours or something like that. Then he woke up, wondered where he was, uh, looked around, looked at his pillow, turned the pillow over because it was full of blood from the previous patient and wrote a letter to me. And in that letter he... It's, it's a marvelous letter. He's, he, he declared to me uh, how much he loved me, how, how he finally could find the words for that and uh, that he was going to give up this whole Africa project and come home and we would start a new life together, which we also did a few months later on. And I tried to find that letter, because I had, uh, I had uh, set myself up as one of the speakers at a commemoration um, event uh, on the day that Stig was to, to have the burial ceremony, and I, I would be one of 18 speakers, and I couldn't, I didn't know what to say. I was totally at loss for words at that time. I, I, I couldn't express my feelings or my loss or anything like that, so I really needed that letter. So I looked for it. I looked for it everywhere. And this is what happened. I spent the entire afternoon searching the whole apartment until late that evening, after going through every closet, I found a big cardboard box inside one of our storerooms, and inside it was a small box crammed full of letters. On one manila envelope was written, to be opened only after my death, Stieg Larsson. The envelope contained two letters dated February the 9th, 1997, when Stieg was 22, in Stockholm en route to Africa. This may seem difficult to believe, but I really had never seen this envelope before. Stig had, Stig had left it with his belongings at the house of the friend with whom he was staying in, in Stockholm at the time, before his departure. And even since then, the box had tagged along with us on all of our moves, and Stig had probably forgotten all about it. My finding of that envelope this way was so extraordinary that I looked up to heaven and said thank you to Stig. I don't believe in a life after death, but I do feel that there's a spiritual dimension to some things that happened. And that was the letter I read on his, uh, on, on the memorial uh, day, memorial commemoration of Stig. And I wonder if I should read parts of the letters to you, but Maybe you would like to read it yourself. I just want to say that uh, that letter really helped me. It still helps me. I, 
I open it sometimes when, when I feel really confused and really bad and just look at it and, and see his positive words to me. Hang in there, uh, continue your life, uh, do something about it, don't give up, uh, but please don't forget me. And that's so sweet to have somebody saying that to you. I think people maybe should write that kind of letters to, to their loved ones before it's too late. Because it really, really helped me a lot. <laughs>